Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. I've got a couple of videos here on this channel about how you can make your own supercomputer setup at home. One using a Raspberry Pi and one using a Jetson Nano, which means you also get to use the GPU for some of that GPU intensive computing. Now the problem with both those setups is while they work absolutely fine, they can be a little untidy. You've got ethernet cables running all over the place. You've got power cables running over the place. You need a switch, you need a, a rack or some kind of case to put them in. You need to worry about the cooling. Now there is a way of putting this all together in a neat solution called the Jensen Mate, which works with the Jensen Nano modules, but gives you cooling and power and ethernet all in one little neat box. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. So the Jetson Mate is a custom built case and circuit board that allows you to plug the modules from the Jetson Nano directly into the board. And it's got onboard gigabit ethernet, it's got all the stuff you need for power, it's even got a big, nice generous fan for cooling. Now it works with the modules from the Jetson Xavier NX, it works with the four gigabyte Jetson Nano modules, and it works with the two gigabyte Jetson Nano modules. And you can mix and match, you can have four of all one type, or you can have one of one type, one of another, and so on. Now on the printed circuit board itself, there is built-in gigabit ethernet, which means you just need one cable to connect it up to your network. And there's also all the power circuitry that you need. So it's powered just by using a single USB type C connector. Now, because of course you're powering multiple modules, it needs to be a pretty beefy, pretty big USB C. So you need power delivery, 65 watts or greater to get that to work. And then also because you've got all those little modules in there together, there's a cooling solution and it has a big fan on the top. It's actually pretty quiet from, uh, from my using of it here. I leave it switched on all the time and the fan doesn't actually bother me in the slightest. And that of course helps get the air through that unit. If you're using the Xavier NX modules, which have their own built-in fan on each module, then there's also the little connectors on the motherboard so you can power those fans. So it really is a complete all-in-one solution. Now the hardware setup is really, really simple. You literally just take your modules, slot them in, just like you'd be slotting in memory or something in a PC motherboard, little white wings, click up, and that's it. It's absolutely, it's connected straight away. Now, once you've got them all in, you need to power it on with that power delivery USB-C, and then it all just starts to boot up. And the little LEDs on board, which tell you the kind of the state of each module as it's going. Now on the outside of the case, there is a HDMI connector and some USB ports. Now, if you are connecting in HDMI, it connects to the first module, the first slot that you've got connected there. There are two USB ports for that first slot. And then each of the other slots have one USB port if you need to connect in a flash drive or something like that. Now, if you're using a module that doesn't have an SD card, but actually has the flash memory built onto it, you can actually flash those cards using the Jetson uh, Mate as well. You put it into slot one, you move a jumper, and then you're able to program it. You can also program all four one at a time, and then move them into their individual slots and power up the system. Now the hardware setup therefore is pretty simple. And so now let's look at the software. Now I do have full instructions on how you do this and source code so you can try this for yourself. Uh, running a program that takes the square roots of lots and lots of numbers and uses the GPU to do it. For today's demo, I've actually written a new program which looks at SHA-256 hashes. Now, if you've got uh, this hash, which is 256 bits long, and you want to find out what string generated it, that's really, really hard. Of course, that's the whole point of hashes. Easy to go from the source data to the hash, but from the hash back to the source data is uh, very, very hard. Now, if you wanted to do it by brute force, let's say you had a password stored uh, as an SHA-256 hash, then you have to try A, B, C, D, then you have to try A, 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 B, A, C, then you have to try A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, D, A, B, E, and you have to try all the different combinations. If you think about it, 26 letters in the alphabet, just lowercase, 26 times 26 is 676. And then in fact, if you go up and up and up and up, of course it gets bigger by a multitude of 26 every time you add a new letter. Now in this program that I've written, I want to see how long it takes to work out a string that is six characters long. That's 308 million different combinations. And I wanna see how long it takes a little supercomputer cluster that we've set up to crack that using CPU and using GPU. 
Okay, so here we have four modules inside of the Jetson Mate, and here is a window for each one of the four modules. Top left-hand corner here we have a Jetson Xavier NX, and I have a Jetson Nano with four gigabytes of memory. Then the bottom two here are Jetson Nanos with two gigabytes of memory. So the great thing about the Jetson Mate is you can mix and match whatever modules you've got. If you're fortunate enough to have four Jetson Xavier modules, you can put those in there. If you've got the two gigabyte modules, you can put those in there. If you've got a mixture, you can put them all in there. And that's exactly what I've got here in my Jetson Mate. Now what I'm gonna do is run my uh, SHA256 uh, cracking program, and we're gonna run the CPU versions and the GPU versions just to see how you can use a CPU for uh, kind of supercomputing and how you can use a CPU and a GPU together. So the first of all, we're gonna run it in this top left-hand corner, CPU only. So we're gonna see all the CPU bars here go off to 100%. So let's kick that program off. So as we can see here, there you go, 100% usage on all of those CPU bars there, four cores in this one, GPU's not doing anything, and the other ones are just doing their normal stuff, whatever it is that they're doing, because uh, they're not involved in this. Now, this will take in total, because obviously I've tested before, this will take five minutes to run to crack that 308 million combination. So I won't make you wait all the way to the end, but there you go, that's five minutes uh, on this one. We need to remember that number as we start to test on other systems. Okay, so that was the CPU program running on one uh, of the nodes, five minutes. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the CPU version across all four nodes. We're gonna see all four of them jump up high. And in fact, here on the Xavier, you've got six CPU cores. So that's all gonna use all of them to their maximum power. Let's kick that one off. Okay, so here you can see it now. Look at that, 100% on all of these cores. They're all working really, really hard. I think we can switch over to some CPU graphs here just to show you how hard they are all working there, trying to crack uh, these uh, SHH256 uh, um, numbers. Now, this will take in total 76 seconds to run. So that's quite a difference to the five minutes and 15 seconds that we had it on one node. So that's the advantage of using multiple nodes. You get to, uh, you know, farm out the tasks to each of the different nodes and they can all do their part. And of course, we've also included now the Xavier NX, which has got six CPU cores in it. So we've even added a bit more of a tweak there. So this will take a total of around uh, 76 seconds. Now let's kick in a GPU and get the GPU to help along the way. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to run it on just one node. Let's run it on this bottom node down here and see the kind of speed we get using the GPU to calculate the hashes. Okay, so here we are running the GPU version. You can see the GPU kicking into life here. Less usage on the CPU. There is, of course, still CPU work going on. Is it sending the data to the GPU? The GPU's crunching it, the CPU's getting it back, and so on. I think we can bring up now a graph of the GPU uses. There we go. So it's being used. Now, there is uh, obviously some optimizations to be done here because there are gaps in that GPU processing. So my program isn't perfect. However, it does show the power of using the GPU. And this will take, when it's finished, about 45 seconds. Okay, so there's obviously a big difference in one node which took five minutes and one node which took just 45 seconds using the GPU. Well now let's use this one and this one together. So let's use two of them and see what happens to that uh, score. Okay so now we can see it's running on both these nodes. They're both doing GPU and CPU activity. If we just look at the GPU on both of these there we can see they're doing some work. Again some gaps so obviously there is a room for improvement in my algorithm but you can see both GPUs very busy there and let's see what the final time is going to be for this. It's actually going to be around 27 seconds so down from um, 45 seconds so that's a pretty good use there we are we're already done so that was 27 seconds using two uh, nodes there okay final test these are all running remember inside the jetson mate so you've got a nice neat package for keeping all these modules together in your nice little mini supercomputer let's run it across all four and see all four of them leaping into action Okay, so now it's running on all four. You can see the CPU usage has gone up as it's working. And now if we start to look at the GPU usage on these, there's a CPU usage on that one. We can see that the uh, systems are running. All of them are GPUs are running. And the final time for this is just 15 seconds. There you go, it's already finished. In fact, you can watch all that GPU work just tail off now, 15 seconds. So we've gone down from five minutes using one node Okay, all the way down to 15 seconds using four nodes with GPUs. So it's obviously a huge, huge 
uh, saving and that kind of architecture is what you need when you want to brute force uh, this kind of stuff. Okay, so there you have it, both the hardware and the software, how you can build yourself a kind of mini supercomputer using Jetson Nano modules inside of the Jetson Mate. Now, as I said, there are step-by-step -step instructions. There'll be a link in the description below. I won't be publishing the source code for this uh, SHA256 project I've got. I think it needs some optimization. You saw there, there were some gaps in the GPU calculations. So I don't think it's ready yet for public consumption. And before we go, I'd just like to point out that I do have a monthly newsletter where I cover all the stuff I've been doing here on Gary Explains, cover anything I've written over on Android Authority, and also take a look at other things I found interesting on the internet. If you want to sign up for that, go over to GaryExplains.com, put in your email address, no spam, just the newsletter, and I think you might find it interesting. So if you want to build yourself a little mini supercomputer using Jetson Nano modules, this is a great way to do that without having to worry about all the ethernet cables and the power cables and using a switch and the cooling and the rack all fits neatly into this design. I would like to point out at this point, I forgot to say this earlier, this is not a sponsored video, not sponsored in any way whatsoever. How I would like to thank uh, Seed Studios for sending me a review unit of the Jetson Mate. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.